Good afternoon, everyone, in the room and online. I am Clementine Vallejo. I work at Gartner Consulting, and I'm expert in open source, open innovation, interoperability, and data sharing. But most of all, I'm totally thrilled to be here today. I have been at each and every 10 open source summits of OFE. Oh. <laughs> um, as we will explore the path in the next panel for a public fund of digital commons, uh, let's talk about the why. Europe is the birthplace of the biggest digital commons, the internet. So that case is made. The next generation internet is a European fund over 100 million euro running for five years now. The program has a unique ambition to drive the internet technology towards a human-centric internet with European values. Gartner Consulting and NLNet worked with the European Commission five years ago on how to shape it, how to make it work. So the NGI had to be a digital commons. It had to innovate with European values like privacy, decentralization, and so on. The answer was to bring in the open source community and make the funding scheme more agile. Today, with a thousand projects funded, we are taking stock of the impact of the NGI with a study. I will share some initial findings from data collected on these open source projects. So we explored how the projects contribute to EU digital rights, EU policy, standardization, and sovereignty, but mostly what happened after the funding, the sustainability. The survey revealed that three quarters of the projects can increase safety, security, and empowerment of individuals. 60% of NGIers see themselves as promoting sustainability of the digital future with their project. These are just two examples of the six European digital rights and principles. But each NGI project implements at least one of them. About 30% of the projects implement three. This shows the ease of the open source community to commit to European values. The second finding is that 90% of projects relate to at least one and up to five EU policies. Digital Commons, almost half. GDPR, 40%. CRA, a third. Digital Markets Act, Digital Service Act, a quarter. And EU Digital Identity, 15%. This shows how the NGI fund drives legal interoperability and the rolling out of European digital policies. The third significant finding is that more than half the projects are working on alternatives. Alternative means the opportunity of choosing. And in this digital policy context, alternatives can also be the source for achieving digital sovereignty. Let me give you a few examples of NGI-funded solutions. WireGuard, LibreOffice, NextCloud, XWiki, Matrix. Virtual private networks, decentralized social media, collaboration tools, and instant messaging platforms have the potential of being used by millions every day. NGI is also funding tools targeting the whole software supply chain supporting the uptake of the famous SBOM standards. Actually, over half of NGI projects are rooted in the standards ecosystem, 
with IETF and W3C being the most cited organizations. Other organizations mentioned are, for example, the Open Geospatial Consortium, highlighting the importance of geolocalization, which will be a pillar to the Web 4.0. So there is a clear footprint of the NGI fund in the landscape of European values, policies, standardization, and sovereignty. But is this footprint in sand, and will it be washed away when the funding stops? Sustainability is a fundamental point of the debate of public funding. Let me cover that with these last data points. So three quarters of projects follow through as part of a larger community effort for 40% of them or an existing business for 20% of them. 8% of projects follow through with the creation of a company or a foundation. We can therefore estimate that the NGI has created 80 new sustainable legal structures. NGI-fueled companies have varied business models. Interestingly, half of them provide software as a service, hosted solutions, or managed hosting. And this can help avoid the technical hurdles of reusing other people's software. Now, a bit of information about our dear developers. The NGI funding of open source projects attracted key talent and community effort. So three quarters of these projects have a community, with some projects running in a community more than a thousand people. And so we estimate that the NGI tapped into a community of 80,000 people. This existing community will not disappear and will continue building on NGI projects if the NGI fund disappears. So, to conclude, working with the open source community creates a multiplier effect. It attracts talents and contributions that align to European values. And these ripple effects are also happening in the uptake of those solutions, because one-third of these NGI projects are actually channeled through the mainstream distros. As for the funding of innovation, NGI has achieved so far the goals of its agile design, fail fast or scale, with small increments. With that, I have given you insight in the ripple effects of funding open source, we see it can shape the EU tech landscape of digital commons that is sustainable, sovereign, and aligned with EU policy. And I thank you very much, and I look forward to the panel. Thank you.